Hey everyone, and welcome back to So You Say You're Married. And today I am excited to introduce you to some very special guests. This is Nick and Adina Johnson, both of which are marriage coaches as a huge power couple together. And I have been following them on YouTube and they give some wonderful advice as well as have an amazing background together. So I'm going to turn it over to Nick and Adina to give them a proper introduction of themselves and tell you a little bit more about their background, where they come from and why they're here. Great. Thank you. You want to um, open this up? Honey? I'm going to let you do it. Okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, Cody. We appreciate it. Um, as you said, um, this is my beautiful wife, Adina. I am Nick Johnson. We have been married for 21 years. Wow. wow. 21 years. Yeah. So 21 years. Congratulations, uh, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you. 21 years. And uh, we are marriage coaches. We've been marriage coaches now for probably around 18 years, yeah. 18 mm -hmm. years. And really what we decided to do and how we came to be marriage coaches was that we realized that we love each other, um, but we didn't know how to be happily married. And so really we started off going into uh, coaching ourselves, going and trying to get tools so we could relate to each other better. And then uh, through those efforts and trying to learn how to coexist and be happily married, not just married, um, we really realized that, you know what, um, it's not as hard as people make it, but it's sure not easy. And if you're willing to so put the work true. in, um, you can really have a happy marriage. So we kind of went there and started to get, you know, training and certifications. And I guess kind of getting to the other side of the couch or the sofa where actually, you know, helped out couples. And that brings us here. So we're really thankful to that. We're in the Jacksonville, Florida area. And uh, really, we just have a passion on individuals being um, the most of the, getting the most that they can out of their marriage. Yeah. And being marriage coaches, once we got involved as far as helping our relationship, because I was a, um, I've been a psychology professor about as long as we've been marriage coaches, and I was a youth counselor prior to that. So all of the psychology of it, just I just soaked it up. I just really was interested in it. So then when we got opportunity to help get certified and help other people, in fact, our clinical director said, I think you should just get certified. I guess I was bugging him too much. <laughs> <laughs> all those so, questions yeah yeah all those questions and reading every book he gave me and so he goes I think you guys just should get certified and it's so funny because we, we were in the classes to get to for our our coaching our help I was always volunteering us for everything and it got <laughs> it's some volunteers up here volunteers <laughs> <laughs> always because I was just a student of of the environment so i always sat up front dragging him all the way and he didn't kick and scream as bad <laughs> he knew he didn't have much of a choice <laughs> yeah you know the interesting thing about it cody is that well, this is what i realized and um when we originally went to uh, marriage coaching i was like you know what um maybe i can find and this was the original reason why i wanted to go i was like i'm gonna tell her stuff and she ain't been listening <laughs> so i was like maybe if you go to somebody else they're gonna tell her the same thing i've been telling her and she'll get it. So when we went, we Who started. Who got it? Huh? Who got it? Uh, you know, this is the realization I came to that, you know, um, it was, I was doing some stuff too, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of, you know, a shock to me. So I'm like, okay, well, you know, I can be doing some things better. And so in my um, approach to try to get her fixed, I realized that I need a little tweak in my stuff. So that's kind of. Yep. It's a two-way street. It definitely is. Mm -hmm. So, and the one thing that we've learned, like you said with that, the one thing that we've learned is that guys really resonate with guys. And so some of the things that our clinical director would say, he goes, he would literally come to me and say, hey, did you hear what he said? X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, I've been telling you that for months. And he was like, no, I never heard you say that. Yeah. And it's the same way when, as we were coaching couples, the guys would really just get what Nick was saying. So that, that just made it a perfect fit because I think a lot of times they don't really want to hear from us anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's that obstacle, obstacle, you know, between communication too, because biologically we just, we think differently, you know, men and women think differently. And that's one reason I was so excited to have both of you on is because you both can contribute to that from your own marital experience and from mm -hmm. a professional perspective on how to handle those communication obstacles that couples have just by simply men think with logic. They have to think, you know, usually one at a time 
and women are, are connected all over the place and their minds bounce quite a bit. And so it, it's sometimes it takes a huge learning curve for a lot of young couples to figure out how to communicate together. Mm -hmm. And so I was very interested in hearing how you guys traversed that and then what advice you give to people when they encounter those issues. Mm. You want to go first on this one? Yeah, there's quite a few things we do. What we do as marriage coaches, we teach individuals tools. Mm -hmm. So usually if they have an issue, we try to find the tool that, that will assist them. So if it's communication, we'll give a communication tool. Um, if it's just, if it's one of the marital um, discords, one of the you know main things that will stop a marriage, we give them that information. So we really lead with information so they can get the tools from us so they can learn or anywhere. I mean, but most of the time we'll have a tool that'll help them and assist them in a process because we're real big on tools and processes. Yeah. If you go and you think about just coaching in general, you know, if you align it to sports, you know, a, a coach doesn't get in the game and play. Mm -hmm. a, a coach prepares you for when you're in the game. So if you think about it that way, okay, you have practice and kind of the, that practice that you have really lets you know what to do when the heat is on. So our thing is that we want to get you here, get you um, a particular skill set so that when you're in the midst of that disagreement with your spouse, like, you know what? Um, I remember what we practiced already. Or I remember this, this skill that we can use. Because what happens is often when we go into a conflict with our spouses, no one goes into a fight thinking that they're going to lose. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, you know, I'm going in there and I know exactly what buttons I can push, you know what I'm saying, to get her, get him angry. I'm going to give him the knockout blow. And then I'm going to win. But ultimately, when you win a disagreement in your relationship, the marriage loses. And so the thing is that you really want to make sure that you're going in with goodwill and that you really learn how to articulate your emotions. Because typically the only emotion that we say is okay is anger. Even like no one really is like, oh, I got angry. But the thing about it is that we have to understand that uh, anger is a secondary emotion. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is once you identify what that underlying issue is, that anger will subside. So if you feel like you're being taken for granted, or if you're feeling alone and isolated, and as an <laughs> effect of that, you're going to be angry. So if you deal with that underlying issue, by default, that anger is going to subside. So we really want to make sure that individuals are able to articulate, put words with their emotions, and understand it's okay to be vulnerable. And that's another thing that we mm -hmm. see that happens too many times in couples. They're afraid to say, you know what, what you did hurt me. You know, and I've, I've started, and Medina gets this, if Adina or even anybody else does something to me, and they are, and they care enough I about- I don't do anything to you. Yeah, she doesn't do anything. <laughs> She's perfect. What are you talking about? <laughs> <She's perfect. laughs> if, if they come to me and they're willing to, I guess for lack of a better word, humble themselves to mm -hmm. care enough about my well-being, to say, hey, you know what, if I did this, or if I did this, if it hurt you, I apologize. And if they hurt me, I'll say, you know what, yeah, it hurt me. And I appreciate you caring enough for me to come in back and say that. Because when we start to discredit that, you know, no, no, it didn't bother me. Well, if it didn't really bother you, guess what? They may do it again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you need to let them know when you did that, it hurt me. And I appreciate you coming back. What can we do to avoid that from happening in the future? And that's mm -hmm. really all about communication. You'll be amazed. Once you learn how to communicate with your spouse, communication at the, at the job will be easier. Yeah. Communication with your family members will be easier. Because effective communication isn't something like a light switch that you want to cut on and cut off. You need to get that muscle memory, once again, kind of goes back to coaching, where you know no matter what happens, that's going to be your default behavior. And until you do that enough, you get that muscle memory, um, you're going to fall back into those bad habits of yelling, mm -hmm. screaming, things like that. So our goal in being marriage coaches is that we get you to the point where you know, without having to think about it, how to act in a particular situation that's going to be beneficial for your relationship. Yeah, second nature. Yeah. So what are some tools or tips that you would tell people when, it, when they're trying to discover that the anger is a symptom and not a cause? How would they determine the cause? How would they pick that out? How would you help people with that? What we usually do if we try to get them to identify where their arguments lie. So mm -hmm. say, for instance, if we start arguing about the toothpaste being squeezed the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And then if it goes all the way back to every argument you have, it goes to your mom. <laughs> it's like, well, your mom did this. <laughs> then we know that that is an underlying issue. So we try to get them to understand anytime they have a disagreement, where, where does, 
where does the disrespect and the disconnect come in? Mm -hmm. So once we get them to help to identify those things, then that will give us a better opportunity to guide them to the right tool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what um, oftentimes individuals will yell when they feel as though they're not heard. So, I mean, it's just as common as, like, hey, if, if I'm upstairs and you're downstairs, I'm going to yell because I'm like, I don't, I can't hear you. So what happens is, is when you're communicating with your spouse, people start to yell because they don't feel like they're being heard. So mm -hmm. if you find yourself yelling, ultimately what you need to do, if your spouse is yelling at you, you need to realize in your head, okay, they think I don't hear them. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what do I need to do? First of all, I need to step back, you know, because no matter what happens in a relationship, at times, you know, someone has to be the champion in the relationship. You know, right. there's times when Adina is mm -hmm. um, the champion, usually her. <laughs> And then there's times when I am, and when I say champion, that means that, you know, in that situation, someone has to be willing to say, you know what, I'm not going to add gas to this fire. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm going to step back. You know, it's not a sign of weakness. No, because ultimately what happens, and me and Adina has done this before, there's been times when the other person was kind of going off the rails and the other person chose to be the champion in that situation, that we would come back and say, you know what, I wasn't in a good space. I appreciate mm -hmm. your willingness you know what I'm saying, to understand that and to be the calmer head in that situation. Yeah. So that's really what you want to do, you know, um, because ultimately at the end of the day, it's all about, I was, we used to say this when we were um, younger than we are now. And um, we partially can't say this because it was like, it's about getting old and gray together. And as you can see, I'm already the gray part and I'm getting closer to old. But the oh, thing great. is that you have to make those sacrifices mm -hmm. today for your relationship in the future. Yeah. And that's really what it is. And it's gotten to the place now where, and we try to teach couples to do this. I mean, as after over 20 years in, we teach individuals, because what I'll do a lot of times, if I feel myself getting hot, hungry, or something is happening, I try to stay in tune with my emotions and let Nick know ahead of time. Or he does the same thing. If he's had a rough day at work, he'll say, you know, babe, I've had a rough one today. You know, I just need a few minutes. And so we try to give each other that space and that opportunity to decompress. And we try to be proactive and tell each other earlier before there's a blow up, before there's an issue, before there's a problem. So we can kind of fix that, get in the right headspace and then be okay and be happy together. And, you know, what I've learned as the mom, you know, of small children, that it's so much easier to get myself together than it is for me to ruin the whole trip or ruin the whole, you know, mood of the entire family and then try to get four people in, 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 in a better headspace. Mm -hmm. That is so true. And what you're talking about too, that's something I work with my clients on a lot because a lot of times I'm working with just one member of the relationship. Usually, usually it's the women in the relationship that are seeking out coaches or seeking out help. And mm -hmm like you say, it's somebody has to be the champion of that relationship. Someone has to focus on, okay, there's a problem. I don't know what it is, but I know I need help. Mm -hmm. And if I want to make this relationship last, I want to make it work, you know, then I'm, I'm going to have to seek that outside help and be that person that does it. And sometimes they feel vulnerable or they feel like it's a weakness for reaching out for help. And that goes away after you start working with them and you teach them that your vulnerability is actually your strength. You know, that's mm -hmm. where you're going to find those building blocks to actually start not only repairing your relationship, but building a stronger, solid foundation for your future. And, mm -hmm. and being that self-awareness or gaining that self-awareness is where you're going to start. So you have to work on yourself first before you can start working on your marriage or anything else. And what mm -hmm. you're talking about there, where you recognize your emotions, you recognize your feelings, you recognize if you're getting hangry or if you're getting tired or if you need to decompress from work, you've already recognized those feelings. You can give your spouse a head up and you guys are already, you know, miles ahead of the game versus if you didn't, your spouse comes in, has no idea. They're blindsided by a bad mood and a fight escalates and you really have no idea why there's a fight to begin with. And then mm -hmm. those things fester. If you don't get them cleared, they fester and they become bigger than what they should have been in the first place. So what you're saying is, is I love it. It's on par with everything that I coach on a lot of my clients as well. And it's nice to know that, you know, you're aligning with other coaches sometimes when you hear how they present it. And I love your analogies, especially when you're speaking about, you know, being a coach and on the playing field, because I know there's a bunch of guys right now that are going, oh, 
oh, that just clicked. You know, that light bulb just went off. <laughs> and there's a bunch of women going, oh my God, we're back to football. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it works, you know, it resonates and it works. And that's what I love about it. And you guys, not only do you teach it, but I can tell by the way you guys are interacting right now that you live it and it makes it so much easier to teach it as an, by example than it does by just preaching. So props to you. Yes. Yeah, thank thank you, you for that. And I think just kind of as we go into it and one of the things I try to share uh, with, you know, the men that I come in contact with, that there's nothing wrong with a man being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think vulnerability is your superpower to be honest with you. Yeah. You Mm -hmm. know, there, there's this, this, this line where, you know, unfortunately I think, um, as a man, we want everything that comes to being, you know, the head and the leader and all this other stuff, but we have to be uh, the leader in all aspects. So that means in our relationship Mm -hmm. as well, not just like, no, it comes to be like, okay, I'm, you know, these are my slippers and my pipe and no, and, and all points. So it's nothing weak about, being it, you know, and oftentimes, you know, we kind of had this bravado going on, um, mm-hmm. but that's, that's not really the case, because I'm very thankful that, you know, I came to a realization that, you know, you have to sometimes expose your heart to be completely loved, you know, mm-hmm. and we talk about it, you know, you want to bond with someone, and two things that are required for bonding is physical closeness and emotional openness, and so, uh, uh, you know, there are times we'll be physically close, but we don't have that emotional openness. We don't want to talk about our fears, and you know the things that we worry about as being mm-hmm. providers and things for our our household. So um, I, that's my biggest thing when I talk to men. I say, hey, you know what? It's it's okay to be open. It's not a sign of weakness. And this is mm-hmm. really not. And unfortunately, you know, guys, you know, I'm a, I'm still a guy. I know, I understand that we get ribbed and all kind of stuff, you know. But are you a guy? I, I still am. <laughs> I still am. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I still am. Yes, ma'am. So. When I, and I say as a guy, I say, you know, it's, you can still be a man's man and be emotionally yeah. open for your, your spouse and your children. It's, it's yeah. nothing weak about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, if you, and if you think I'm soft, try me. Yeah. No, he's, no, he's really good about that. And this guy, <clears throat> as we're counseling couples, he's really hard on guys. I, think, I am. I think sometimes I thought I was hard on guys, but he's really hard on guys. And... Mm-hmm. He has gotten to the place sometimes, you know, when we've had couples in with the wives that are, you know, getting ready to get married because we, we, we do premarital counseling as well. He has really said, you know, gotten some guys faces and I'm just like, he's like, if you're going to treat her wrong, leave her home with her parents. (laughs) He's like, really like, dude you will have to see me. And I'm just like, Oh my God. And this, this, and this is where, you know, me being a, a, a man, I understand that sometimes we have to be very direct around certain things. And this is the way I view it. Um, I'm, I'm fortunate enough, I have a daughter. And I know that whenever she decides to, you know, get married, um, I, I don't want it to be any question, the, you know, the individual that she marries, that they're ready to make the sacrifices that are necessary to be a husband. <clears throat> and, and it's just, it just happens. And as we talk about marriage, we tell people that if marriage was called anything else, it would be called sacrifice. Yes. Right. That's right. it. It's a ton of sacrificing that's going on, you mm-hmm. know? And if you find yourself in your relationship where you're not making any sacrifices, you got to take a hard look at what you're doing. Because mm-hmm. at some point, someone has to make sacrifices in that relationship. And it's not about just for you, it's about us. And you mm-hmm. really want to make sure that you're doing that. But on that token too, people call it sacrifice because, you know, you're with someone else. So you don't get your way all the time. It's not self-centeredness. It's not all about you. But what they don't look at is on the other side of that sacrifice, what you may have sacrificed over here seems huge, but what you gained by doing that makes this look trivial. And people don't see the other side of that sacrifice sometimes until they try it. And then they see the, the, what they get back, the receiving end um, from that other person that they care so much about. And those emotions and that gratitude that is returned to them is sometimes it catches people off guard, but mm-hmm. it's also a huge turning point because it's not something they've really experienced before or they expected because they're mm-hmm. coming from a place of me, 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 that self-centered um, mentality when they mm-hmm. get out of that and they go into something that's more of a giving mentality, it's suddenly not sacrifice anymore. It's a willingness mm-hmm. to give to your spouse because you know you're going to get reciprocated with something back that is so much more than what you would have if you just clutched it close to you. 
Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, it, you know, it is better to give than receive. And that's mm-hmm. so important because you cannot receive anything with your arm, you know, with your hand tightened up. You got to open it up so you can give and then receive. Mm-hmm. That is very true. So switching gears a little bit on you, um, Adina, when we first talked originally on our first phone call, you had mentioned something about you believe that marriage is in jeopardy. The institution of marriage in general is in jeopardy. So I know, I know this is switching a hard gear. We're taking a right hand turn here, but I wanted to get your thoughts on that. Both of you, both of your thoughts on that, on why you believe the institution is struggling today. I think so, because, you know, when individuals say they quote 50% of marriage is, you know, in in divorce, and they're really negative about that. Or when you hear guys say, oh, you're getting with the old ball and chain. And, you mm-hmm. know, there's just been a very negative connotation with that. Mm-hmm. So I, and I do, I think I see a lot more couples living together and having families and not necessarily getting into marriage. And even as a, a psychology professor for years, I would hear oftentimes marriage is just a piece of paper while you're in school getting another piece of paper. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's like counterintuitive, isn't it? <laughs> and I'm like, well, money's paper too. Mm-hmm. You know, there's rights and responsibilities that come with getting married. That's why so many people are fighting. So many people have died for the right to get married. And so it's so important that we understand. So yeah, I do think marriage is in jeopardy because of the negative around it. But I feel like if individuals build that strong foundation and they really put the work into it. I mean, if you think about it on your job, we're trained constantly at our job. Mm-hmm. Why not get trained constantly on your spouse, the thing that's most important, on your children? I mean, even though I've been you know, a psychology professor for 17, 18 years, and I was a youth counselor prior to that, I still read books on marriage. I still read books on you know, how to connect better with my kids because I think the educational piece is so important that we learn that there's always a different way to do this. And if it's not working, I mean, continue to do the same thing over and over, it's just insanity. So if it's not working, let's regroup, let's do something different and let's get a different training about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think unfortunately, um, what we, where we are right now is that, you know, we are now in a state where there have been individuals um, who are the product products of divorce yeah. and they've seen it all around them. Mm-hmm. And so, oftentimes it's not really viewed as taboo to get a divorce. Oh, yeah, you know, I got a divorce, I tried that. But I think ultimately what we really have to um, be mindful of is that as Adina said, okay, well, 50% of marriages end in divorce. 50% are together still too. Yeah, well, 50% are still together. You know, I'm like, I know people out here playing lottery and the odds are a whole lot worse than that. So <laughs> yep. I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to try it, you know, and we really have to understand that, you know, it's not going to be easy. I think that Unfortunately, now, um, the side that we have, we kind of want things to be perfect at the beginning. Nobody wants to work for anything. It's almost like when individuals first get married, they want to get the house that they just left from with their parents. Like, okay, well, yeah, your parents might have a two-story home, four bedrooms, two bathrooms, two-car garage. But guess what? That was after years and years yeah. of them working mm-hmm. and saving. Okay, so you got to crawl exactly. before you walk. Yeah. So you got to understand that there are going to be bumps in the road you know, um, in your relationship. And I think that's what people miss, you know, like, I don't want to be unhappy. Well, you know what, you know, sometimes, you know, things worth having, you have to work for. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we really miss that. It's not that instant gratification, you know, um, it's that that work. But if you look at in totality, you know, we started off rough, but the good thing about marriage and really working toward it, it gets easier over time. And if you Mm -hmm. just put in that work, it just gets easier. And if you have, you build that strong foundation, then we'll get it. You build that strong foundation, mm-hmm. then yeah, it does take work, and it is important for you to do that. Yeah, I agree. And you know, my husband says the same thing that you just said, Nick, about when you want, you look at what your parents have, and you want to just inherit something. You don't want to work for it. You mm-hmm. want to just go ahead and inherit it because it's already there. So why not? That's the easy way out. And my husband constantly goes, I don't understand that mentality because I want to build something for myself. I want to, I want to build my own life. I want to work for myself. And that mentality goes into everything that he does. 
it doesn't just stop with materialistic things or building a life. You know, it's, it's every bit of what he puts out into the world. He's constantly putting out his best because he wants to work for it and he takes pride in that. And I think that makes a big difference on how you approach things as far as relationships with other people too, because you, you understand things take work, things of value, things that mean the most in your life take work. And so you accept that and you're just willing to put it in. You don't think of the other option of escape. It's, it's, that's mm -hmm. not even there in your mind. So strictly you have this tunnel vision of, okay, I'm going to work for it. And I'm going to make it work. I'm going to make it happen because this is what I want out of mm -hmm. my life. And I think it's really how you set your goals and how you plan your life and what you want most out of your life. And it depends on where your standards are on things. And I think some people just need to learn that they can set those standards, that they do have the freedom and the ability to set the standards wherever they want. It's not a limitation. And that's a, that's a whole mental shift that we can get into on another day. But <laughs> yeah, because we hear a lot of people saying, well, because my parents divorced, we're just going to divorce. When we got married, all of our siblings had been divorced. And, and it's like all of my mom's siblings had been divorced. So it was a matter of, and I had to just pray about it and say, what is going to make this different? Mm -hmm. What is going to be the piece that's going to solidify our relationship and build that foundation that we need? And we found that getting trained on marriage and relationship was what it, what it took. Yep. Yeah. Cody, and to piggyback on what you were saying in regards to, you know, the viewpoints that you know your husband has whenever we're faced with anything difficult one of the biggest things we'll say is that if it was easy everybody would do it mm -hmm. and so no matter what it is we're in a situation in our, our relationship i mean if it's something in our business you know if it's like oh this is such a headache we're like no it feels easy everybody would be doing it. Mm -hmm. you know so that's just really the mentality that we try to have you know in our relationship and just in life in general yep and I think that is a relation or a, a mentality that everyone should stand on, I think. But fortunately, everyone doesn't. Otherwise, you know, everyone would be doing all the hard stuff. And then that hard stuff would be easy and we'd have even harder standards. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, but I want to thank you, Nick and Adina. I know we've been on here for, I don't know, close to an hour now. And mm -hmm. I have felt like it was only five minutes and it has been absolutely wonderful talking to both of you. And I want to thank you for coming on to the show and really exploring a lot of those mindsets with you. So before we close, is there anything else that you guys want to add or you want to touch upon? Well, we do have our YouTube channel, Nick and Adina on YouTube mm -hmm. and um, all the coaching that we have is right there. And that's so important. You know, if people reach out to us and we even take requests if individuals have certain questions we always feel like, well, other people may have that question too. And so we'll do a video. I know our taping this week, we did a couple questions and it worked out really nice because, and I think it's so important because individuals get to hear what Nick has to say about it. Whereas a lot of times, you know, we do, we just want to hear a guy's perspective. Yeah. And I think that kind of with that, uh, we have several playlists that we've tried to dedicate to really have like, you know, topical situations. Like we have uh, love and respect um, series that we've been doing there. Uh, we have communication series. Um, actually one of our uh, most popular playlists has been on forgiveness. So that's one that a lot of people. Ooh, that's a good one. So we, uh, we do that. Um, and also in that we have um, had a lot of situations that we speak to and often um, as Adina kind of shows the book that she wrote and that's butterfly blue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the pain of infertility and the power of forgiveness that's on Amazon but I think forgiveness it's so crazy Cody because so often for us I wish we could be these you know marriage coaches that can just teach something we've never had to go through mm -hmm. but unfortunately even writing about it you know I had to go through the process of forgiveness and that was major for me and so and that is a process so we do have quite a few play playlists on different things and you know, we share freely some of the things that we have had to overcome as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're just really thankful that um, as we decided to expand our family, um, we were fortunate that we had really laid a foundation in our relationship to deal with the infertility struggles that we had. Um, oftentimes, infertility is a source of contention that can break up marriages. And I mean, mm -hmm. you really go to the point where you really live from month to month. You lift out one little window, like, okay, well, these are the days, you know, and uh, you go and you hope and it doesn't work out. And it's real easy to start pointing fingers at people and things like that. So we were really thankful that 
we had gotten to the point where we had built up enough goodwill and had enough skills that as we went through that situation, we didn't turn on each other. Because far too often, um, it really becomes frustrating and gets to the point where, you know, some marriages don't weather that storm. And we're just really thankful that we do that. So Adina documented our journey there in her book, um, Butterfly Blue. So it talks about forgiveness, but also it talks about some of the struggles that we had with uh, infertility. And Butterfly Blue, you said, is on Amazon. You guys have a YouTube channel called Nick and Adina, and it's N-I-K. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not N I C K N I K and mm-hmm. Adina A D I N A H on mm-hmm. YouTube and everything that you you're gonna need to find these guys, especially if you want to work with them, is gonna be down in the show notes below this video. So be sure to click on it, go subscribe to their YouTube channel. I promise you will not be disappointed at all. And check out Butterfly Blue on Amazon because I know so many people, so many women especially, are going to benefit from reading that book and knowing that they're not alone in some of those struggles. So thank you for being vulnerable and for being or for putting that out there for people to to see and experience with you. Thank, thank you. you, Cody. Well, thank you guys for being on the show, and I can't wait to have you on again in the near future. And in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for joining. So you say you're married, and until next time.